What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and today we need to discuss the ever-changing landscape of GPU mining. There have been many impacts on the space, none of which were more impactful than the Ethereum merge, but recently there's been some concerning developments that I think should garner some attention. The primary issue I see currently is the lack of innovation in algorithms to deter ASICs while also providing an alternative to power hungry and heat intensive algos like Kapow and Progpow. Today I want to dive into the effects that the entity has had on the GPU miners and the motives and technology behind this mysterious figure who does not appear to be acting in good faith. So let's begin with what we know so far. The entity first appeared on April 22nd, 2024 and began mining three coins simultaneously, Alephium, Radiant, and Kylocoin. This was around the time that ASICs for Alephium had been revealed by Goldshell, but prior to Ice River and Bitmain being publicly available. Now, Kylocoin forked shortly after, which turned out to be a pretty smart move in my opinion because Radiant and Alephium found out pretty quickly once they began dumping all the coins that they were mining. Now, in an attempt to understand the motives and establish a working relationship with the entity, Radiant quickly found out also that the entity was not interested in any form of communication or to foster a relationship and was purely motivated by financial gain. They claimed to be using the proceeds from selling RxD to fund operations, but did not specify what those operations were for, whether to manufacture more ASICs for sale to the public or for themselves. What little communication RxD had with the entity led them to believe that they would allow RxD to function as intended, mine between two pools and give part of the mining proceeds to the development fund, thus keeping the golden goose alive, only to continue harvesting the eggs. According to the Art of Satoshi from the Radiant community, the entity was not breaking any laws set forth by the protocol and despite the community's cries for action, would instead take no action. Regardless of what you think of that decision, the fact remains, votes are cast by the miners and not having a majority vote due to being outweighed by the entity in hash rate pretty much sealed Radiant's fate. Since then, as far as I know, there is no indication that the entity plans on bringing any equipment to market. Many have speculated that the entity was an extremely large FPGA farm. However, I do not think that's the case, but we'll get more into that in a minute. Fast forward to more recently, starting in the beginning of August, a massive surge of hash rate has hit the Casper forks. Carlson, Husat, Pyron have all been hit very hard with a massive influx of hash rate. Now the assumption is that it's due to the entity. But we can take a look at hash rate on some of these coins like Radiant and Alephium to see if they have moved hardware over or if they have more hardware or perhaps there's a third possibility which would be that perhaps Caspa ASICs now have new firmware allowing them to mine Caspa forks such as Pyron hash or Carlson hash. Now looking at the RxD chart, we can see that in fact Radiant has gone down from 196 terahash to 98 terahash, losing about half. Now Alephium, on the other hand, is going to be a bit harder to determine because just a few days ago, Alephium went from 3.5 petahash to 6.3 petahash in two days, and then dropped two petahash the following day. Now, this could be Bitmain testing units prior to shipping, or it could in fact be the entity, but that is doubtful given that the sheer amount of hash rate that piled on compared to the initial spike at Alephium saw from the entity back in April. Now, these recent developments have been detrimental to an already declining GPU profit margin scenario leaving GPU miners with more questions than answers in an attempt to avoid sunk cost and steer strategies going forward. So let's take a look at hash rate and price charts to get a better understanding of how things have been going for coins like Radiant, Pyron, Husat, Alephium, and others, starting with Carlson. 
Uh, this is the entirety of the chart on ZX for Carlson, and as you can see, uh, it has been downhill ever since its inception. However, what we really want to do is take a look at the time frame more recently to see if this influx of hash rate from perhaps the entity has had an impact on the price. And you can see on August 13th of 2024, it appears as though Carlson has had a pretty significant pump. If we measure from the bottom of this to the top of this wick here, we're going to come up with about 180%, 185% increase. However, since then, we have lost a significant amount of gains. So from the top of that move to the bottom of that move, we've lost roughly about 50%. And this sell-off began on August 24th, which would be right about the time that hash rate picked up. So if we take a look at the hash rate chart for Carlson, you can see that on August 19th, we had a little spike. We went from roughly 56 terahash to 105 terahash. So I shouldn't call that a small spike. That doubled the hash rate pretty much overnight, but then dropped back down to about 55 terahash again on the 21st. And we are currently sitting at about 137, 145 terahash. So again, we go back to the price chart here. The pump started on August 13th and ended on roughly August 24th. Next up, we've got Husat. So this is the entire price history on ZX for Husat, but we want to zoom in to the last few days here. So we're going to go back to August 9th. So a few days prior to the pump for Carlson, we've got Husat getting a pump of approximately 87% over those first couple of days, but the entirety of the move uh, several days later brought us up about 111%. Now from the top of that move to where we're currently sitting right now, we're looking at a loss of about 27%, but keep in mind the entire market has had a sell-off over the last couple of days. Now if we compare our price chart to our hash rate, you can see that we had an initial spike again on roughly August 21st and then another one on August 26th. So on August 21st on Husat we had a sell-off and then on the 26th we had a pump. Next up we've got Pyron and Pyron's chart looks a little bit better than the others but not by much. And if we zoom in a little closer and take a look at what has happened recently, as of August 8th we've gone up recently about 250%. It seems as though the sell-off began on August 15th. Now if we take a look at the hash rate chart, we can see that hash rate started to pick up roughly around that same time, around August 8th or August 9th. We had a pretty significant peak on August 19th. But keep in mind, all during this time, Pyron was in the process of doing a hard fork to 10 blocks per second. Among other things, that is what caused all of this hash rate to fall off. And again, back to the chart, if we take a look at August 15th, that would be this day here where we pretty much peaked and then had a pretty significant pullback, but we've kind of gone sideways since then, kind of like the hash rate did as well. Now the big sell-off day would have been August 19th and it dropped significantly. So the total move for Pyron comes in at about 250% from bottom to top. And then from the top to the bottom, we lost roughly about 50%, but currently we're sitting at about a 40 or 35% loss since then. Now there's a lot more going on with Pyron than there are the other Caspa forks, and we're going to get into that here in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to Radiant. So this is Radiant's entire history on ZX. And our time frame here is going to be a little bit different than the Caspa forks because the entity did show up much sooner on Radiant than it did these Caspa forks. So if we take a look at when we had this big spike, that was roughly around March 13th. I think the entire market was doing pretty good at that time. But the date that we specifically want to look at would be April 22nd because that is when the entity showed up. So right here on April 22nd, we had a pretty significant spike up. I think a lot of people became aware of the hash rate piling on, assumed that an ASIC was being manufactured for Radiant, 
but just as soon as they started getting rewards, what do you see happening to the price of Radiant? So if we take a look at the hash rate chart on Radiant, you can see that this was April 22nd that the hash rate spiked, and it's pretty much stayed up there this whole time until today. We've gone from 196 terahash down to 98 terahash. So it does appear as though a significant amount of hash rate has fallen off of Radiant. Now the big question is, can Radiant's price recover without the massive amount of selling pressure from the entity? And a side note for Radiant community members, if you are out there, if ever there was a time to fork to prevent the entity from coming back, now would be the time to do it. Now, lithium is going to be a lot harder to determine because there's a lot more going on in this ecosystem than what's been happening with the entity. And we could take a look here at specific dates and see if anything in particular has really impacted the price from the entity. So it's much harder to see in this scale, but around April 22nd, we were at about 486 terahash, and we quickly doubled that overnight and got up to about seven to 800 terahash overnight. And it's been a slow climb up ever since then, up until recently we had this massive spike in hash rate just a couple of days ago. Now if we take a look at what happened to Elephium on that date around April 22nd, you can see that would be about right here. And what have we done since then? We've pretty much been on a downhill climb until we got the announcement from Bitmain and Ice River that in fact there were going to be some ASICs available to the public. We had this nice spike all the way up. But prior to that, the entity has just been selling Elephium all the way down. And the last coin we need to take a look at is going to be Caspa because as you can see, we've had a pretty significant fall off in hash rate on Caspa as well over the last couple of days. Now, I think most people are going to assume that this is a loss of hash rate due to the fact that these newer ASICs are being shipped out and Bitmain is no longer mining on them or Ice River. However, with this significant amount of hash rate that has fallen off, we really need to take a look at the possibility that there could in fact be new firmware allowing these ASICs to mine other coins, specifically Pyron, Husat, and Carlson. And I find it rather hard to determine because we did see a pretty significant amount of hash rate fall off of Radiant just in the last 24 hours. But this wouldn't be my base case to assume that Caspa ASICs are now capable of mining other algorithms. It just seems to me to be a coincidence. But I guess we'll find out in the next couple of days whether or not the Caspa hash rate picks back up. Now all that suffice to say that the GPU mining scene has been completely shaken up. If you take a look at profitability on all of these different coins, it is minuscule. And the only coins that are really profitable to mine at the moment are all going to be very memory intensive algorithms such as Evermore, Xano, uh, you've got a few others like Zealous, but pretty much everything that's running either ProgPow or Kapow or some type of Pow algorithm. And so far, there's been a variety of ways to try and address this issue. So for example, you've got CPU coins like Ghost Rider that randomize things so an ASIC can't keep up. You've got Kapow, which is very energy intensive and also very memory intensive, and that discourages the manufacturing of an ASIC for that particular coin. But show me the incentives and I will show you the outcome. And what I mean by that statement is, regardless of what algorithm you use, Take, for example, ETHash. Even an ASIC was developed for ETHash, even though it was memory intensive. And the reason that it was developed was simply because the incentive was there. If there was a Kapow coin that had enough price appreciation to create that incentive, make no mistake, we would have an ASIC that worked on Kapow. Now you've got other examples, for instance, Warthog, where it pretty much requires a CPU in conjunction with a GPU, and I like that approach. I feel like it should go back to the ethos of one machine, one vote. And if I ask myself, would we ever see enough price appreciation on a Kapow coin in order for there to be an ASIC on it? It seems unlikely, but the amount of power 
that is wasted on Kapow as well as the heat that is produced is definitely a problem for GPU miners, especially hobbyist miners at home. And for that reason, I think that we should continue to explore alternatives to find something that is more efficient to run, but still capable of deterring ASICs. But it could just be wishful thinking on my part. Perhaps you guys have a better solution, or perhaps there is no solution at all. But that leads us to our last topic of discussion, which is in fact, perhaps there is hardware already in existence that would make that quest futile. It may also explain what the entity is using. And I said we would circle back to the subject when some were speculating that this was an FPGA farm, but I don't think that that's the case. Now, now Son of a Tech recently put out a video talking about VPUs, which is not a CPU or a GPU. We're talking about RISC-V chips that are dedicated to mining specifically and solving cryptographic problems. And this could be a game changer for crypto mining forever. I do not think that this video is an understatement. And I think that there is a possibility that that's what we're looking at. Because if it was an FPGA farm, number one, it wouldn't be able to hit three different coins simultaneously with that massive amount of hash rate. I think that they are mining multiple coins simultaneously. If there was a large FPGA farm that was capable of producing that much hash rate, I think that they would have found their way to coins previously and we would have picked up on this trail a long time ago. Now in a recent live stream, Red Panda and I were discussing whether or not this was an FPGA and he makes a very valid point and that is FPGAs are field programmable gate arrays and ASIC is something that is an application specific integrated circuit, meaning you can't change from one coin to another. So this is not an ASIC, but I don't think there's an FPGA farm out there this large that's able to maneuver around this quickly. I think we are looking at new technology and if it isn't VPUs, then it may be something even more concerning. But I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and watch this video from Son of a Tag so that you get a better understanding of the potential hardware that could be out there and how this could change the game forever. Now there's one last theory that was floated to me by someone whose opinion I highly respect. They are very knowledgeable in this industry and that is what if this entity is actually someone who owns a foundry or has access to maybe not the latest gen chips, but some of the older gen chips, and has the incentive to point those towards some of these projects. And that actually makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider the fact that they are not mining to their own node. They are choosing to utilize pools in order to do this. And the big question is why? If you take a look at some of the largest pools, DX pool, F2 pool, HUM pool, ant pool, K1, and that leads me to the last thing I want to discuss in this video, which is the fact that if you listen to a lot of American politicians lately, they're all talking about making America a leader in the Bitcoin mining industry. But I don't think they have a clue as to how far behind the competition they truly are. And I think part of that is definitely going to start with making sure that we have more pool operators here in the U.S. In fact, I can only think of one at the moment, which would be Viper.net. So you don't have a lot of choices. And if something happens in China, which has happened in the past, that could definitely create a lot of problems. Now, Son of a Tech is going to preach to you that you should be able to run and operate your own node, which I do highly suggest that you learn. You know, not everybody understands how to program Linux and wants to go through the trouble. So I think it's extremely important that we encourage and rally behind anybody who's going to run a pool here in the U.S. Now, I know everything that we just discussed in this video may force you to feel a bit pessimistic about the GPU mining space, but you have to understand that GPU mining is a different beast ever since the Ethereum merge. And I personally am glad that I stuck with it because you would not believe the amount of Casper I accumulated prior to ASICs being available. And there will always be a bigger and better option coming and GPUs may be able to take advantage. However, you do strongly need to consider that 
things are changing and if you're not paying attention you could get left behind so hopefully a video like this has kept you up to date and informed and if it has i only ask that you do me one favor hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed already go ahead and do that and i will see you on the next one